Germany getting past Algeria in what perhaps will be the most entertaining match of the World Cup so far. There were lots of chances, especially for Germany in this match. But in the end, it took two goals from them in added time after 90 minutes to take home the victory. Yeah, so I was uh, quite disappointed about the way they started in the first half. It was a catastrophe. I had never seen them that ba bad, but at the end uh, it was good and, uh, and I'm happy that we made it because I have tickets for my, my Ghana. A real scare for Germany there. They survived the scare in the end. But this match was surely not for the faint-hearted. Let's go across uh, to our screen here in the studio and take a look at just how the Twitter world was reacting when this match was on. Of course, there are these peaks that you see. The first one is the score uh, from Shirley, the G Germany's first goal that sent Twitter world a, a buzz. Uh, of course, the two peaks right next to each other are the two goals that came uh, close by. Ozil netting the winner. The second one for Germany, of course, Jabu getting Algeria a consolation. But as many as 7,000 tweets per minute when Germany got their first goal first up. Let's take a look at some of the most retweeted tweets. And I think this is a pretty good uh, description of what Germany was doing yesterday. <laughs> Neuer playing this extraordinary sweeping back defending position. And surely the only man at the net, uh, at the post for them and in front. Uh, so Neuer, 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 Neuer. It was all Neuer yesterday, it seemed. Uh, let's take a look at what somebody else tweeted. The great game, compliments to Algeria who played so well and fought till the end. Uh, this is what Botang had to say at the end of it. Short and sweet, Maracana. Here we come. Uh, that's all that matters in the end, isn't it? They managed to get the win under their belt and they managed to go through. Great, great game for both sides. Ashley and Eric with me in the studio. Uh, Ashley, would it be fair to say it was the most entertaining match of the World Cup so far? Yeah, it was. Um, full credit to Algeria. You know, they, they took the game by the scruff of the neck. They took it to the Germans and, and they had a, an attacking game and they actually tried to win the game from the start. So it was uh, unfortunate they never got over the line, but you know they played their part in a, in a great game. Yes, the couple of chances they had in the first half, had they converted one of those, it could have been a very different game. And also, if that their, their late game you know, had come just a little bit earlier than Germany's second. Yeah, I mean, you know, we thought they might sit back and be defensive, but there wasn't. They were unfortunate not to get a goal. Um, you know, it probably would have made it an even better game if they did get one, but the Germans were resolute as ever and, and managed to grind it out and get the result in the end. Yes, uh, Eric, uh, Neuer, 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 is that the fair way to describe this? <laughs> I mean, he was everywhere, wasn't he? <laughs> Very effective in goal. I mean, the Algerians did everything that they could, mm. but this man made sure that the goal was safe. And, and if you see how many times they attacked, he came out of the line. Mm. If you see the heat map, he's been outside the box. He's been very effective. He hasn't, he hasn't lost a one-on-one -on -one chance. He's made his presence felt on a one-on-one -on -one chance, which is fantastic from a goalkeeper. It can be risky though, actually, what he was, try what he was doing so often in the match. It has, but if you've watched Neuer over the course of the season, even in the Champions League, you know, he's got these fantastic starting positions. He reads mm. the game really well and he's so quick off his line. I mean, he actually almost got one wrong earlier on and, and the, you know, he's, he's Salamani, who's, who's mm. quick himself, tried to get down the outside of him and Noah showed his, his pace to get back and, and getting a fantastic tackle. Mm. I don't I'd yeah. also like to acknowledge well, why Neuer is doing all this because typically he's playing the Bundesliga out there, right? Mm. And now Bayern Munich as a team, as a philosophy, I think that has a very key, key role out here for him doing so well. Mm. All right, let's go across to Arunava, who's joining us from Berlin. Arunava, you must be watching the match with your friends. Uh, this was quite a scare. Did you have your hearts in your mouths a little bit? I said before the match it would be a tight one and I think uh, one should not forget that this Algeria team is, is not actually an Algerian team but is actually a French team. I mean, not, nearly all of them are born in France. So uh, a lot of them have played for the junior French national team. So it's it's a quality team. Um, they've got passion, they've got pride, everything going for it. And of course the old shame of Gijon came in. Uh, Algeria has beaten Germany twice as per statistics. So uh, an interesting encounter was there but the problem really was that Germany was not in the match early on but they were you know, getting better and better as long as the match lasted and towards the end uh, the stats showed. I mean, they had 28 shots on goal and uh, they should have actually sealed it towards the end actually in regulation time. Yes, uh, but it was not Muller's day also. He tried to do a lot of things but just couldn't get one back uh, at the net. Uh, nine World Cup matches for him, nine goals but not in this one. Uh, Borea, we talked about the loaded history that this match had. And for 90 minutes, it seemed uh, Algeria could manage uh, that revenge that they were so keenly looking for. 
Absolutely. You know, and in the last 30 minutes, even then, I mean, to come back 2-0 down, to score one against the Germans, much fancy team. If you go and ask the ordinary football fan, it's Germany versus Algeria. You're not the experts. People will say, oh, it's, a, it's an easy game. I mean, that's what this World Cup has been all about. It's about the underdog. See the gap. It's narrowed. It's actually narrowed. Arunava made a fantastic point about this team being a half French team. But the fact of the matter is, the gap between the haves and the have-nots is practically non-existent. We have proved it once again. You know, any, any underdog can slay any big gun. That is the whole fun of this World Cup and I think that is absolutely fantastic for global football. Right, Ashley, has uh, this result taken a dent on Germans' title aspirations or their credentials for you? Do you think uh, that it has put doubt uh, uh, on the fans' mind if they can go ahead and do what they plan to do? It's probably put a little bit of doubt. I think what it's done is uh, it just shows you that you need to be completely on your game 100% if you're going to be successful in this World Cup. You know, it's, it's the World Cup for a reason. It's the best teams in the world and, and it's normally the most consistent ones that win it. And, you know, Germany was maybe a, you know, they've not rotated that much in the tournament. There may be a little bit of tiredness creeping in. You know, there's a massive mental tiredness that's a big factor in the World Cup and they, they need to master this. And obviously, we know they picked up a few injuries as well. So, mm. you know, maybe a little bit of doubt. Yes, so it could get tougher for them from here on. Of course, they now draw France. We'll talk about France's result in just a bit. But let's take a look at uh, just how the sentiment on Twitter was. Of course, we showed you just how many people were tweeting while this match was on. But here's uh, what they were saying specifically about Germany's performance. Uh, the sentiment on Twitter for Germany, 79% positive but 21% negative. Uh, this is how the Twitter world reacted on Germany's performance. Of course, it could have changed a lot after the result. And I have a feeling it was much much, much more even after the first half because the first half more or less belonged to Argentina. Germany in the end managing the win they needed that much more. Let's talk about the other big match uh, result from last night France versus Nigeria. It wasn't as comfortable as the scoreline would suggest in the end but France eventually broke Nigeria's brave resistance to secure a place in the quarterfinals of the World Cup with a 2-0 win. Um, we, we feel very bad. We are not happy about the game. Um, it's not that our players didn't try, but it didn't go our way. So we are not happy. So, but we have no choice. That is the spirit in um, football. You understand? One person have to lose, why so, uh, one person have to win? So that's the spirit of the game. By next tournament, we're going to come up stronger and stronger. And believe you me, we take the next World Cup back to Africa and Nigeria. We're going to break the record. I said so. Okay. We had a goal disallowed that should have been allowed. We had a penalty tonight which should have been granted. It could have been 2-1. Nigeria could have been through. <laughs> but we, we party anyway. We can't do anything except party. We're in Brazil. Brazil! I know, I know. It, it sucks, but, you know, we play well. The, the referee wasn't on our side, but we're proud of the boys. We're proud of Nigeria. We lost. They were supposed to come to Rio for the quarterfinals. What are we going to do now? Now we have to go home. <laughs> Well, they're laughing, but it's really heartbreak for Nigerian fans. They will be very happy, of course, with the team's performance overall in the World Cup. Uh, let's quickly take a look at what Twitter was saying when this match was on. Uh, a cagey affair to start with. Uh, it kind of broke loose a little bit in the second half, but lots of tweets. Uh, this one was, of course, uh, Victor Moses' uh, goal line uh, uh, saving uh, heroics which got a lot of uh, tweets uh, then of course the two goals for france pogba opening up the score and then of course uh, yobo's own goal that went to france uh, uh, well uh, in the end uh, nigeria uh, actually they attacked really well through the wings through moses and musa but in couldn't quite convert their chances and you know france took took them in the end yeah i was a, a little bit surprised at how open the game was you know france being probably more dominant and could have controlled the game a little better it was almost like a basketball game a little bit end to end especially the first half yeah. but then Ultimately, I think Nigeria just couldn't sustain it for 90 minutes. A little bit of lack of discipline, a little bit of lack of concentration, and France capitalised. Yes, but their goalie did it tremendously well, isn't it, uh, Nigeria and Yuma? Yeah, I mean, he was there at the right place at the right time. Do you see the Pogba's volley? Yeah. Fantastic. He was, I mean, it was like as if Pogba gave it to him in his hand. But, you know, he positioned himself very well out there. And I kind of, you know, I, I would like to call out here that the, the French defence was good. The, they were solid back four out there. They mm. really, there were opportunities, 
but they were doing the job right. So I, I, for me, France was good, and Pogba was the man who made the real difference out there. So the you way, don't quite agree with the statement that the scoreline is not really, you know, doesn't do justice to Nigeria in this one. I kind of agree and disagree, but but the way I see the French coming out there and playing the 4-3-3 position, hmm. opening the game and creating opportunities, it was nice to see. It was nice, nice to see some aggressive football. You're really saying football. you didn't have your, uh, you know, you didn't have some doubt because it's getting quite late in that match. Well, it, it, it got late, but it didn't, you know, the, the bottom line was they won 2 0, right? And that's what I predicted also I last night, <laughs> saying that. I they think, would go there and they would get it. I think France struggled a little bit trying to play Giroud and Benzema in the same team. They're both really at number nine and they yeah. looked a lot better when Giroud came off and the Gregeman came on. Yes. Um, that, that made it better. Then there was only a real one clear number nine, which is, which is Benzema. I don't think you can play the two at the same time. Yeah, right, I kind of agree to that because yeah, they kind of have a same role and you cannot have two same people of the same Yeah, perhaps something to look forward to in the next match and they take on Germany so they can't be that slow to start off in that one. Uh, but the news uh, that came, came uh, out uh, from the FIFA World Cup today and was quite uh, surprising and shocking is from Cameroon in fact. Their football federation is to investigate allegations of match fixing now by its players in this World Cup. This follows of course claims that a convicted fraudster correctly predicted their they lose 4-0 and have a man sent off against Croatia. There is suspicion that seven players were involved in underperforming during Cameroon's matches. The country's governing body released a statement confirming that the ethics committee will probe the claims of fraud, quote-unquote, by seven bad apples. The investi investigators will look into the country's three Group A matches, particularly the one I mentioned against Croatia. Cameroon lost that 1-0-4. In a statement, Feka Foot said, We wish to inform the general public that though not yet contacted by FIFA in regards to this affair, our administration has already instructed its ethics committee to further investigate these three these accusations. During Cameroon's match against Croatia, Alex Song, remember, was sent off before halftime for elbowing Croatia's Mario Mandzukic. This was predicted by the alleged fraudster, which raised eyebrows in the country. Let me go across. To Bora for this, uh, Bora really not the kind of news we want to hear from World Cup, uh, especially in a World Cup where smaller countries are doing so well and then, you know, uh, having these uh, doubts being placed over them. You know, Shivani, is there one sport that is free of corruption? I mean, that is now what's uh, plaguing us. I mean, each of us sports fans, passionate sports fans, can't there be one competition, one mega event when corruption is sort of not raising its ugly head? Yes, this has not been proved so far. From the very start of the World Cup, there's been problems with this Cameroon team. Initially with their money, you know, the money wasn't transferred, the players were refusing to board the flight, and then somehow it got sorted and now this. I mean, come on, for God's sake, you're playing the World Cup, the biggest stage of all. If you have to fix matches, go fix matches in your own club in own country. I mean, not, not at the world stage. This is ridiculous and it's shocking. Absolutely. This is not what you want to hear, as I said, from the World Cup. Uh, uh, Cameroon's uh, campaign has been uh, rid of problems right from the start, even before they began, actually. And now, at the end, this is what comes out of it. Uh, now, this one is expected to be a cracker of a match. Of course, we're talking about Lionel Messi being in action. Two times world champions Argentina now take on uh, what has been a strong Switzerland in the pre-quarter final match tonight. Both the teams have exactly the opposite style of play while Argentina is an out-and-out -out attacking team. The Swiss team is built around its castle. Argentina have never lost to Switzerland in six games with four wins and two draws. A record the former is expected to extend. Argentina won all three group matches but have not been very very impressive. Messi pumped in four goals in the tournament, including two outstanding ones, but his fans would say his best is yet to come. Sergio Aguero, their striker, is ruled out by a thigh problem and is set to be replaced by Ezequiel Lavezzi. An alternative uh, option for coach Alejandro Sabella is to bring in another central midfielder and maybe switch from 4-3-3 to 4-4-2. Switzerland, which has been traditionally solid in, in its defence, also showed cracks in their match against France. So who will it be? Will Messi mesmerise uh, with his magic or will Shakiri shine in this one? Argentina, Switzerland at 9.30pm in Sao Paulo today. All right, uh, let's go across to our football experts first up. Uh, is, it's Messi versus Shakiri. Is that a fair way to describe this match? Yeah, I mean, both teams will set up to try and utilise these two players. Um, interesting to see Switzerland changed a little bit in their last game just to try and get Shakiri in that hole, in that playmaking role. And you see him bursting 
from a, a deep roll through the middle of the defences to get onto a couple of his goals and obviously similar left foot, dropping his shoulder, coming down on his left foot and, and getting those curling shots in and, and Messi the same, you know, Argentina and Gears to try and get him in the hole, to try and get him in the, in the spaces really. You yeah. know, if you look at the board, um, you'll, you'll see Messi and what they'll try and do is he'll go out there and they'll, they'll try and get him in these little areas here in between what we call in between the lines. So you'll have a, a midfield line of Switzerland and a back line and what they want is him getting it in the hole here and then to try and orchestrate things with through passes or some shots. You know, the classic stuff that he does, you, you'll see him time and time again. He'll, 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 be, he'll be running up to players with the ball and you know what he's going to do. He, he wants to run inside to check, to get it back onto his left foot so then he can knock his curling left foot. Mm. And it's the same as the free kick we've seen. We've seen him on the free kicks when he's generating his free kicks. It, it, we know what's coming, obviously I, I'll do it with my right, he's left footed. And he uses a technique in football where he uses this, this part of his foot as he takes the free kick and he keeps his knee over the ball. It's a real, real good technique, a fine line between generating the power to get it up but also to get the dip to drop it in behind the wall. So as he strikes it, he strikes it like I say, he opens his foot up and he sort of like slaps the ball, but, but also whips it, probably a little bit like um, a table tennis shot. Yeah. If you watch table tennis players, they sort of like have that kind of technique, which is what he generates with his foot, which is mm. an extraordinary skill. Uh, uh, you know, people like Drogba can do it. You've seen him do it in all. But just going back to their formation, with Messi coming in these little holes here, what is key for them is then Di Maria has to operate and, and take care of this whole left hand side which is what he'll do. Yeah. When they haven't got the ball they come nice and narrow and when he has got the ball it'll, it'll give him a little bit of width and also we've also seen that his, his striking power, he's had four or five long range shots and been unlucky not to score as well. What about their defence Ashley? That uh, seemed a little bit uh, uh, under par isn't it? Yeah I mean they've, they've got a similar trait to Brazil, they've got attacking full backs, certainly with Zabaleta he likes to get down the outside, you'll see mm. Gaggio will come in nice and narrow to make it, in the, and it opens up for Zabaleta so he can get caught forward, as, as so can Rogio. Mm. Um, the two centre halves really haven't, haven't operated fantastically well as a partnership. A few goals has come you know, in those grey areas, which is in between the defenders. Is it your man? Is it my man? You know, they'll need to up their game tonight. Mascarano obviously helps out defensively. He's a, he's a defensive midfielder and he'll give him a little bit of cover, but those three in the, in the heart of the Argentinian defence will will certainly have to be on their game and Mascarano will be given the job of probably looking after you know, their Switzerland main yeah. player. Yeah. yeah, so the question really is if Switzerland has enough to trouble Argentina, perhaps show some sparks. Let's go across to Arunava for his final take. Arunava, what do you expect from this one? Argentina all the way and uh, two beautiful strikes from Messi again maybe? Could be, but uh, one should not forget that Otmar Hitzfeld is the coach of Switzerland and Otmar Hitzfeld, of course, uh, will hope not that this will not be his last match as coach of Switzerland. And, of course, they've got a very, very German formation for them playing, uh, be it Bernalio, Giroud, uh, Rodriguez, Shaka, Shakiri, Mehmedi, Drimic, all play in the German Bundesliga. And uh, these are guys who are quite good. If All of them have had good seasons. So I wouldn't count them out. And uh, especially Shakiri showed uh, why he's such a talented player and why half of Europe is after him. Yes, uh, the, the only player to manage a left-footed uh, uh, hat-trick, if I'm not wrong, in Shakiri. the Shakiri. So, uh, if there's uh, Messi's left-foot magic, uh, Eric, there's also Shakiri on the other side. Yeah, my worry is the gap between this, these two defenders. I see mm. at least a couple of goals coming through. So, but the final score for me would be 3-2 for Argentina. 3-2 for Argentina. So we're expecting a few goals in this one. Borea, what's your thoughts about this match? Big match for Messi. Uh, yes, he's done well for Argentina so far, but he needs to step up to the plate. In fact, Argentina as a whole needs to now show that spark that their fans are waiting for. No doubt, but you know, just imagine this man every time he plays, will Messi show his magic tonight? I mean, how many times has he heard that in his career so far? Perhaps every day of his career. That is what Messi is all about. He is magic. He is one who is, you know, who is a genius. That is why this kind of pressure, and I'm sure he'll deliver. I, I expect Argentina to win tonight and win convincingly. They, they need to stamp their authority in this World Cup. That is what Argentina is all about. That is what Messi is all about. Let him just demonstrate that he is a class apart. Don't harm his Rodriguez or anybody to this man. He is a class apart. He will emulate Maradona. All right, I like what we are saying on our screen, Messi's magic versus Swiss timing. <laughs> well, that's a good word, but actually, uh, if you were the coach, uh, how do you, I mean, you, Messi doesn't need a lot of, you know, preparing or training before a match. I mean, he, he does his day in, day out, but this is a World Cup, this is a World Knockout stage. Uh, how do you prepare for this match? 
I think they'll 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 set up like like I've mentioned. They'll set up to just try and utilise him to get him on the ball as much as possible. They know that he's magical. They know that uh, any any minute he can just turn it on and, yeah. and just do something out of this world that we've already seen. So it'll just be let's let's try and be compact at the back and let's just get this genius on the ball. Mm, oh, genius on the ball. Well, that's the correct way to put it. Your uh, prediction for this one? Uh, I think it might be a little bit tight to start with, but hopefully it'll be an early goal and the game will really open up. But it, it could be quite cagey to start with. All right. Uh, so let's hope we see a lot of goals in this one. Uh, so far, the quarter, the pre-quarter finals uh, have been quite even. Uh, uh, two went into at a time, and uh, you know, two into penalties as well. Let's see what happens in this one. Uh, Luis Suarez finally apologising for his biting row that ruled the Uruguayan striker out of this World Cup. The striker was forced to return. Remember, after FIFA imposed a nine-match ban and a four-month ban on him for attack on Chileni. Suarez had denied biting since that infamous incident, but now the striker finally took to Twitter to issue an apology. Suarez, who is now back home, said he had time to reflect and recollect what happened. Uh, the truth is, he says, uh, Cellini suffered the physical result of a bite after his collision. For this, he deeply regrets and apologizes not just to Cellini but the entire football fraternity. That's not all. Suarez also vowed to the public that such an incident will not be repeated. Uh, Earlier, uh, before the apology, actually, former England captain Gary Lineker had tweeted uh, saying that Suarez has been asked by Barcelona to, uh, to apologise uh, in public if his transfer is to proceed, further fueling the rumours about Suarez moving to Barcelona. And hours later, Chileni actually accepted Suarez's apology, saying uh, all is forget all's forgotten and uh, he hopes that FIFA reduces his suspension. Remember, Chileni earlier had said the ban was quite excessive.